Hey love bugs, this is Riles and make it you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed. I'm doing blessed and highly favored and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome. And to my returning subs, my grown, extended, beautiful family. As always, thank you so much for the love and support. It is truly appreciated. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste, love and blessings, love and light. And many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you have been watching my videos for a while and have not already, please drop a line. I would love a chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me and if you feel like the videos just give you a good uplift please give a thumbs up share would be greatly appreciated you know sending love light upliftment and protection towards all and anybody who's coming in with bad vibes hidden intentions and crazy motives just trying to do anything to destroy distract or block i'm sending all that mess back to you 20 million times fold the set with mine is going to be blessing love and light and ultimate healing because i know it's truly needed um in the video i'm doing today it's called Twin Flame 101, Hey Oka's Aftermath, The Rise of uh, the Fallen Warrior. All tea is being spilt. You know, I've been going through different stuff, you know, and it, it's gotten to that point where, you know, you're tired of being tired. You know, your situation was used, my situation was used to be on a platform to help many. You know, being able to share my experience, my stories, so the di different things that I... I, you know, I constantly, you know, the demons that I constantly have to fight within myself, you know, healing, being able to be accepting of different things, you know, trying to see that everything unfolds in God's time, divine time. But it's at that point where I'm tired of my character constantly being assassinated by different things, different people, because the fact is you're trying to save face. You're trying to keep yourself out of jail, you know, different stuff like that. But it's at that point, I don't care no more. I, I really don't care anymore is this situation I've been going through you know God has led me to talk about this it was like probably about a week ago two weeks ago that I was talking about my purpose you know who my dad is Prince Rogers Nelson on these different things you know I have constant you know family well they're not my family I don't even call them that you don't earn that title with me I strip folks of that title you know my mom's ex-husband and their family keep a close eye on me family that's under my roof keeps a close eye on me family from over there in Minnesota is all in the same group, you know, trying to do everything they possibly can for me to come up missing or me taking my life or anything like that. And it's at that point where I sound tired. You know, I'm really tired. You know, it, it runs deep when you have law officials in this situation. You have lawyers that sign wills, you know, of my dad's testament, of his living will of testament. You know, people are like, well, he doesn't have a will. My dad had four. Okay, four. My dad had gave me one back in 1988, you know. Uh, after he had passed away, uh, it was so many different things that I was going through in my life. And it, when it, everything came at me at once, because I had to go to constant, phys, you know, uh, therapy. Because I used to constantly have night terrors about my dad. And it wasn't even night terrors of, like, him scaring me. But it was just stuff that I was getting too close to the truth. So they end up sending me to therapy because it's just like she's not sleeping at night. You know, anybody who's seen my adoption story, I told this already. But it's, you know, it's like my situation. People are just like, it's, it's dumbfounded by them. Like, I can't believe you went through this, you know. And there's a lot of times where it don't feel surreal to me. At times, like I tell people, I have no problem with telling them. I have weak moments a lot. But I'm a strong person. This situation has really strengthened me in ways i never seen coming. You know, there's at times where I, I can cry until I can't cry no more. To where my eyes been felt swelled shut. And I try to understand how can people be so heartless? How can be, people be so cruel? People that supposed to be family is willing to end your life over some money that they're not even entitled to. You know, and I had to be able to understand where I've lost my children behind the situation. Senseless stuff where my children are turned against me. I had to be really digest that. And that's not my even talking about my kids. I don't even want people looking at my kids in the wrong way because I know this stuff was influenced by that because it was just like how I grew up with my mom. I see that same energy I projected towards her. I'm getting that towards my kids. So I know that was karma for me. And I'm okay with that because I know I really put my mom through a lot of stuff because my mom's ex-husband and his wife always constantly, you know, they, they did stuff in an indirect way to try to make it seem like my mom was money hungry. She didn't even care. She only wanted to keep me for money when it was only them. You know, it would be people that was close to uh, my mom's ex-husband's wife. They used to throw stuff like that. Oh, you know, you the, you, you know, you the money machine. They use you. They can't even stand you. And they use you for money. You know? And I was just like, what are you talking about? And it used to always be a, a, a butt of the joke when people used to get mad at me. And they were like, well, I was stop hanging around with them. And it's not because they wanted to keep me protected from them. Because they were trying to protect themselves from what they were doing. Because they bragged about that. We, I hate her. Her dad always sending her money. And we're living good off of that. 
it was something I had to really digest and it was just so many different things they didn't want people to know I was writing bad checks to try to keep ends meet you know to make sure my kids had lights on in their house I used to have to dance you know do two or three different jobs at one time be tired was barely spending time with my kids to make sure that they had a roof over their head and I had no problem with telling people yeah I used to write bad checks you know I was like in debt and they hurried up and paid that off because they knew if that would have got out my dad because my dad was paying so many different people you know to try to find me and stuff like that they wanted to hurry up and pay that off you know I was living in a trailer at the time and stuff like that and they wanted me to hurry up and move before my dad had passed away because they'd be like why is she staying in a trailer you know why is she on hood why is she on section 8 and stuff like that why is she on food stamps when I'm spending all this money and it was at that point where I constantly said you know told even law officials you know even the lawyers that had something to do with my state you know my dad's estate and I really felt in the pit of my gut they had something to do with my father's passing you know um it was at that point because the last day he was here because we live in Georgia he went to go perform in Atlanta at the Fox Theater he was here before that performance okay I was supposed to meet him that day and I ended up talking to him a couple of days before he passed and it was like night and day you know because it was so many people that were showing the different you know uh, pictures of him in the piano uh, it was like one night what was it one song on piano or something like that and it was like two different people because when I talked to him you can really feel like this man is just struggling just to breathe this man is struggling to talk and it hurt me and I didn't know why you know I talked to my dad like two or three days before he passed I think it was on the 18th that I talked to him because he was here on the 14th and then he was I talked to him like four or five days after that you know wonder why I'm seeing all these SUVs and you know stuff like that but I didn't know because you know my mom ex-husband them there and that Eastern Star Mason stuff so I didn't know they had Illuminati stuff going on over there I didn't know what it was you know that was going so they kept arguments on every single time my dad came down here to visit me and I always felt like when stuff more stuff coming out and it was just like you know bank accounts in my name never had entitlement to this money I struggled I've been struggling so I got here it was like I really got through stuff when I was living in the Midwest but when I moved here things got really bad like me and my kids were tight knit and all of a sudden it was constantly arguing you know constantly you know kids being belligerent all this stuff and it just seemed like when I came here you were trying to feed me to the wolves basically what it was and so different situations where I'm tired of my name being you know tarnished I'm tired of my image being you know tarnished and is at that point I'm at that same point where I don't care what people think about me but the truth is the truth don't sit up here and lie on my name if you want to tell something about me you tell them but you tell them the daggone truth don't lie about how you are a victim on certain situations come tired of situations coming back to me whereas saying people under the same roof oh I'm not doing nothing I don't want to have a job no the fact is you want me to get a job to where it's gonna be something where I'm gonna have to still struggle you don't want me you my constantly things are being blocked to where if I get enough money and leave you want to block that or you trying to make sure you know I don't go nowhere and it's at that point, I know a lot of people that watch my videos, some of them is family members, some of the people that know people around here, they watch me. And it's just like the truth is the truth. I've been trying to leave my situation because it's very toxic. You know, I don't want to have to live every day where I have to constantly lock my doors. I have to hide my food because there's stuff being put in it. You know, I shouldn't have to live like that. I'm tired of people lying on me and they're trying to make themselves look like they're a victim of circumstances when it was I was the person. And I don't even call myself a victim. I'm overcoming the stuff that they put me in. But it's just the fact is when I'm overcoming it, I'm telling the truth about what I overcome. And when I have my truth, it's always word to mouth from them. Because the fact is I have to live and breathe knowing y'all looking at my dad's will and testament. You know, my mom's ex-husband and his wife have my dad will and testament where it has my name on things siblings of him sit up here and destroy that because they knew when he passed away their first thing they're going to do is look at okay does he have you know descendants and stuff like that you testing people that you already know this good well no nowhere near related to my dad you give me every excuse in the book where I have to get family permission. I am part of the family, so why do I have to have permission to do that? And they know my DNA is up there and it matches because it's in the DNA system. You know, when this thing first had off, uh, it was it, um, 
like um, towards May and June when they say they're starting to do DNA tests to find out who's the descendants and stuff like that, you have to ask questionnaires. You know, anybody who's a Prince fan and stuff been following the coverage on it, you probably heard of that. And it was just like, I didn't know what was going on. It was like around that time, it was just so much going on. I don't know exactly how things went on, but I knew it was like with me first starting on the DNA uh, diagnostic place, you know, I told him my name. I didn't even have to ask a question. I said, I really don't know. But it was like me and a friend of mine were like, you know, you need to call up there because you look you look like him and all this stuff. And I said, you know, my mom used to always constantly tell me this was who my dad was. And it would be just certain looks that I would make. And people were like, you know, didn't, 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 your dad, didn't you say your dad was a musician? Because they always used I have an RBF face, you know, so they're and don't know why I used to do that. I said, I've been doing that since I was little. They were like, why you suck on your face like that? And my dad does the same thing. I said, I don't know. I've been doing it since I was little. And they were like, wait a minute. Didn't you say your dad was a musician? I'm like, yeah. You know? It was like, I only know one person that sit like that. I said, who? And they were like, uh-uh. You need to go find out who your family is. And people knew. People knew. There were certain people that knew in that situation that where I grew up from. And I would always be the butt of somebody's joke. You know, they would constantly say, you know, your family don't even like you. They use you as a pawn for money and stuff like that. And it's at that point where a lot of people want to, oh, she's clout chasing, oh, she's trying to get attention, she's this and she's that. You can't sit up here and lie on, you know, genetics, you know, because I'll use my, me and my dad's picture a couple of times when it's on different things that I put, even when I first started. And it's just the fact is, ancestry, okay? Even, you know, lawyers and all that stuff, you, you can't lie on ancestry. You know, you can get sued for that. You know, you can get sued for different things where you're trying to fake the funk. Now, I get these every few days. Okay. You see, I don't know if you see that. Ancestry at the top. Now, you see who this is. Okay. Let me, hold up. Let me turn it sideways so y'all can be able, I can enlarge it. Okay ancestry Rosalind you got family tree Prince Rogers Nelson okay anybody who got ancestry you already know this is the exact kind of head letter they use when they're telling you about that okay and it's just like these are the situations I've gone through you know where I really wish I had the money to do that but you know everything that um that is taking place in my life where it is just like you know these things they're trying to make sure it's staying hidden you know and I get these every few every few days on my my email hey you know this is a hint of your family tree and that's how I'm trying to leave my privacy on my um, on my different emails that I use for business and you see this Ancestry. Prince Rogers Nelson. Prince Nelson. Okay. You going through these different things. They know I got DNA matches, you know, different things. And it was just like it really hit the fan for me when it was Aaliyah's birthday, January sixteenth. That's when stuff really hit the fan for me. Like I I mean a lot of things been hitting the fan for me. But that was just really that point where I said, I don't know how y'all are impossible you're blind to the fact that if this comes out there's so many not just people that are related to my dad and non-related because the, f the people are here doing it too even law officials are on this all the lawyers you know that's why the first one Lord, uh, what was her name uh, Lauren Ruthier they were on that you knew you know your family don't want nothing to do with you I'm not reuniting you with your family okay voicemails hearing her say that uh, Emily Unger, you know, because when I'm telling people a part of his his entourage, his band members, when I'm mentioning off names, it threw them in my back because you already know if I'm lying, how would I know these people? Because it'll just tell you the 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 people that are over it, like Commerce Bank, David Crosby uh, Law Firm. This is I'm naming names, okay? The judge even over this, he retired. You you went over in the favor of them, knowing good and well y'all had proof where I'm giving birth certificates, you know. Uh, driver's license and stuff like that you got proof that I'm a part of my dad's descendant and you still chose the family because all y'all had a certain cut you told DNA diagnosis to make sure that they kept their mouth shut famous uh, adoption agencies that you know 
they put their stuff sometimes on TV. I went to them and I had proof that you done paid them off. But when I seen the lawyer that signed the will to my dad's statement, Lionel McMillan, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not they won't be one of those type of people that are on platforms allegedly. I'm telling the whole scoop because I don't care. I want you to sue me. Okay, because the fact is you should be getting sued because you signed to my dad's will in the state of anything that happens to him. I want to make sure everything that is in my name is in my daughter's name. I want to make sure she's taken care of. Because he gave a long list that, you know, he want to make sure that his daughter's taken care of. He sent to them, that to my mom in, in uh, 88. And my dad, my mom's ex-husband, took that paperwork from her and stood up here and said, when she turns 18, I want you cashing out on it. And she already said, and I remember that big argument because we we're about to be MPs involved because we were living on a uh, military installation. How can, neither one of us can cash in on it. You know, this is in her name. The only way you, she, anybody's entitled to it unless she dies. And I'm not trying to sit up here and say, you know, indirectly or directly. They tried to make sure I was annihilated. That's what I'm trying to see. I'm still living and breathing. You know, people try to say I died of COVID and stuff like that. So how can I be? I'm still alive, you know, because it was coming back to me. People were like, oh, you know, they said that you died of COVID. There's, you know, they don't sign your name, different stuff. So they were able to get stuff. Illegal stuff. I don't even know if these things are true, but I'm just like, I'm going through from word of mouth of what people told me. Because this stuff sounds crazy, but this situation is already crazy for what it is. You know? And it's at that point, point, I always told people, don't always worry about what people say. But if it's at that point, I'd rather for you to diminish my character with the truth than you not trying to make a lie where you trying to play victim. I ain't got time for that victim mentality. I'm a victor over all my circumstances that clearly y'all try to put me in and I'm coming out rising and shining. And now people are starting to get scared. It was all fun and dandy when I was having constant nervous breakdowns and crying every day. Self-harming myself. Trying to take medicine to where I'm trying to understand why am I still waking up. When I clearly want to be with my father because you don't took everything else away from me. It was all fun and games to you. Now people are starting to go in poverty. You're having to borrow money to sit up here and pay off lawyer fees that you clearly can't even afford. I got lawyers coming back saying that they can't take my case because they got top lawyers in Minnesota to make sure if I even step foot in Minnesota, I will come up missing. Because they knew if I came out, you are entitled to nothing. Entitled to nothing. I've went through so many nervous breakdowns to where when you see pictures like that, I, that's, that's when I was really going through. This is where I'm still recovering from a hysterectomy from having cancer. Okay, so I was like even not even barely 105 pounds. So I look a split and image my dad where it really, really freaked them out because my mom's my mom's ex-husband and his wife couldn't stand to be around me because I looked too much like him. It was always a trigger of a complex. If I ever say, well, what you doing? I'm going to party like it's 1999. Or it freaks them out if I start sounding like him when I sing. <laughs> I do something like that and it really start freaking them out when I can do that, you know. Stuff like that, I have to go through constantly every day. It's always a hurtful situation where people made sure you lived out your fear. And it's at that point where this is something I, I, I struggle to really heal from. Because it's like the more you heal, the more people want you to stay angry. They want you to stay focused on what they clearly can't have and being able to sleep on the fact that you don't stole some money that don't belong to you. And I tell people constantly, how would you feel if you were in my shoes? You wouldn't even made it as far as I had. In situations like this, when you were chosen to go through some traumatic stuff, and you even trying, it is surprising you how you don't reach the pinnacles and, and you know, and accolades that you done clearly made. And that was only from the gift of God. This is a situation that disturbs the hell out of me where I can see you don't even like your sibling, but you want to enjoy that money, but you hated him. You place everything on his name like, oh, he ain't nobody. He's just Prince or he's the Prince of Darkness. But you had no problem. But it was the Prince of Darkness money that you didn't have a problem spending on what you stole. And anybody who really knows my dad, he was always paranoid. <laughs> he was very paranoid. He was control free. No disrespect, dad, but he was. 
That man didn't sit up here and die without no will. What type of person that was very anal on every single thing that he did that he put his name on. When you put a slave on your face because you know you're entitled to the masters. And you they getting paid more than what you getting paid off. And this is your blood, sweat, and tears you putting in music. And then on top of that, it's hard for me to digest that man fought tooth and nail. Skin off of his teeth to make sure he got his masters back. And just for you to get money, you send it right back to the people he had to fight to get it from. Just to get money. People, oh, he didn't have a will. Okay, why would he talk about that and face down? You go look at the lyrics where he had the song and face down. He says, I put it in a will. You know, people got my phone number. Don't call y'all. All y'all. You know, it was in that. Or you hear Seven, my attack. Says it at the beginning of the video when she's whispering. Look in the mirror. There's a little girl growing inside. The sole heir to a $10 million estate that her father left behind. Seven men watch her every move. She gets colder and colder until she meets you. You know, they guard her. Watch her. Okay? Different things like that. He had a song called My Computer. I have a child. I got to explain. The first song he came out with called Baby. Back in 77, late 77, 78. Was about him and my mom. And the last thing he said in Baby. On the For You album. I hope our baby has your eyes. People you know, people like, oh, he don't have a child. You have to listen to his music. Be My Mirror was about me and him. He wanted me to be just like him. If I you know, follow suit on what you're doing, that, that we'll be able to meet. These in the temple, they were the thieves. Purple Rain is when they told my, he dared my dad. He threatened my dad, don't you ever call here again. That was the last time I could talk to my dad because for a good minute I didn't talk to him. Hearing my dad cry on the phone in 1992 really, you know, and that still really irritates me. Where I can hear that man crying on the phone where he couldn't barely breathe. I'm sending you money. Can I please speak to my daughter? Y'all arguing all the time. He calling, you know, constantly. And they're telling me, oh, if you see Nelson Rogers on his caller ID or Peasley Park, you don't. Don't answer the phone. And if you do answer the phone, don't tell them your name. Why does my name not, you know, and they would threaten me. You know, all, all these different things I had to go through as a child because they got terrified when I tell them, oh, I remember getting punched in the face when I saw Computer Blue when he says, where's my baby? Where has you gone? Because you knew that's the reason why he didn't put it in the movie. And I even told him that. You know the reason why y'all did that in the, in the, in the video, I mean, in the uh, movie Purple Rain, where you only did the first, you know, the first verse of Computer Blue. And then you jump the father songs like why? I said because when he says where's my baby, where where has she gone? You know where's my love gone and stuff like that. That wasn't about an ex girlfriend. He knew that it would have been a fifty fifty chance. He knew I would have watched this movie, and he was forbid to ever talk about me in a direct way. If he wanted to ever stay in contact with me, you know. And it was like things we thought that Prince did was so off the wall but we never questioned him we never did he was very private but the more you tell us about this situation it makes so much sense I said it, it starts to make sense when you know the other half of the situation you know I would die for you they thought he was talking about Jesus no he's talking about being a father people are like how you think that you, you only forgive your no matter how your kids are you're gonna always constantly forgive them you're not a you're not a uh, female you're not you're not a girl you're not a boy you're not a lover you're not a friend the only thing you can be is a parent you know you you is like I'm a you know a sinner I'm told you know I be your love I'm your conscience I'm your dove all those different things he's talking about is being an image of a father I would die for you, you would die for your kids you know all those different things where you know when I started talking to people that he was in band with you know I talked to brown marks you know we got pictures and stuff together and it's just like wow you know he's telling me it's like crazy as this town it makes so much sense it makes so much sense you know I got pictures with my tail and that's on a whole different story you know what I'm saying digging with that there was something else I had to set up your hill from but you know going through these different things you know and you trying to heal from it and it's you know and I always tell people and people when they know my situation they always have so much respect for me and there's some of them that have respect for me that know my situation and they say Rosalind you know I, I don't understand how you can live from day to day and I said it's hard you know where your 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 thorn in your side is something that you never had a chance to deal with and for you to have to digest that people wanted you dead they used you as a pawn to live good and, you know, I, it got to that point where I was enraged with my mom's ex-husband. I said, I don't even know how you sleep at night. 
to where you can actually sacrifice your daughter for a woman that has no kind of self-esteem, no kind of backbone. That she lives and breathes on trying to embarrass me, make me look bad in front of everybody all the time. I was their constant punching bad, their doormat, of being a butt of a joke to always try to make me look bad. And it was at that point where I didn't understand. It was always me reacting before I can really respond and say, why? You know, you always saying that you don't have any money because our birthdays, I mean, her birthday and my birthday was like two or three weeks apart. Oh, well, I don't have any money, this and this and that. Or, you know, you never give us presents. It's like, I'm, I'm already struggling with my children. I'm trying to keep a roof over my head. You know, y'all able, I'm, I'm always trying to sit up here and see how y'all able to afford the stuff that you have because you're always buying name brand stuff that I know just even for a tiny purse, they got a Louis Vuitton purse for my kid's birthday. I mean, for Christmas. And I'll know this purse was like $1,100 and you, you know, I have three kids, you know, and we all were getting it. So I'm like, where's this money coming from? Or gifts that my dad would send or VIP tickets he would send to me. They would always keep them for themselves. All the albums he sent, they would keep them for this. So they probably sold them. You know, like, hey, you know, this is something, you know, from Prince he sent us, you know, because of da 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 You know, even I have, uh, it was like Baby Blue or somebody made a, a YouTube video talking about, you know, hey, he had a daughter and they're saying he take care of. Yeah, they take care of her, all right. Not in the way you would think normal parents would take care of somebody. They did everything in their in their pleasure, in their, in their power to try to belittle me, you know, dehumanize me in every single way they did. You know, when my father passed away, it was so many people that they knew every time they would see me, they give me these most death stares, like I did so much to them. You know, my family that actually loved and supported me when I was going through different things. When my mom passed away, you know, they already started then because they knew my mom was, you know, she was about to die. So they started drama up then to try to make it seem like I was on drugs. I was on this. I was on that. You know, I'm selling my mom's stuff for drugs. I wasn't even smoking weed back then. You know, I was on an opiate addiction, and those things are free because I was on Medicaid, you know, back where I was. I had no problem with telling people that. That was one of my, it, it was like towards my dark moments of where if I knew, if I still stayed in the Midwest where I was, I probably would have been dead with a lot of my friends because a lot of them were dying over opiate overdoses, and I had a few of them. I had no problem with telling people that. You know, when this situation went down, I was a functional weed head. I had no problem with telling people that I had to stay emotionally numb because I had to grasp the concept that there was many times that I spoke to my dad and he was just an Uncle Roger to me. He was just, oh, it was a person that worked very close to Prince and I could never see him. You know, I used to ask, always ask when I was little, you know, my mom, you know, which one is Uncle Roger? You know, and she would just like, oh, we're going to talk about that later, you know, because my mom really wanted me to meet my dad. She would brag about that and her husband got so angry. He never wanted me to talk to my dad, you know. They would constantly get into it. They actually got in, you know, into a scuffle back when I was seven years old. But it was just so many different things that has, you know, really took took me aback. And there'll be di different times where I sit here and cry and I say, how can the world be so cruel? You know, all I wanted to do is know my family. It, it's hard for me to keep friends because when they know, it was like ego and envy would get in the way. And it's not me trying to be arrogant or cocky or anything, but people would be in that 3D where it was already on you know, uh, monetary value that you were already feeling some type of way. And I'm like, I'm not entitled to that. I've been struggling with life where I, you know, I don't get money every, every few weeks, every, you know, every month. I don't get that. It'll be just blessings that's coming in sporadically where I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to eat. You know, how am I going to eat? People with, you know, people had no problem with seeing me starve. I had to ask people for, for the different things. And I shouldn't have to go through that, especially when, when there were situations where people, you know, were in a situation. And I, I was that person that, you know, if I had it, you had it. And, you know, and I had to really see, you know, God really allowed me to see the true intentions of how people are when you have nothing to offer except love and friendship and kindness and wisdom. And I really had to see that from the darkest moments of my life where I'm rock bottom. And I have to go through every day of learning how different things to come up into my life, you know, really having to see things for what they truly are. And it's like I got tired of always trying to save face to, re you know, respect my, my father's side of the family by keeping their name out of stuff where they had no problem with dra dragging mine, you know, through the mud to try to make me feel like I'm a clout chaser. You know, you know, I'm your, you know, I, you know, I'm your first niece from him, you know, and finding out I, I have siblings and stuff like that.
They have gone through things similar to mine that I can't even talk to because people made sure they blocked that too because they didn't want that coming out. You know, you're going through the same situation as me, getting death threats. You know, they're saying the same exact thing. You're entitled to know who your family is. And I felt pain in that words where I wanted to talk to them, but I knew they wouldn't because it was already told to you I was a cloud chaser. I'm claiming to be your sibling and I'm not. No one good well look the split an image of my dad and they do too, you know. And it was just like, Dad, I, I got siblings that's not even 100 miles away from me, you know. And I would really love to be able to connect with them. But it's just like so much stuff has been thrown on our names where they're even getting death threats. And it's like how for people that, that love our father that you're not even entitled to even get a piece of anything. And it's not even talking about monetary value, but just get closure. You had to find out just like I did. You had to find out. And it's crazy because their birthday is the same day as my dad's birthday. So that it really hits deep. You know, and it was just like the things that, you know, I had to find out on Aaliyah's birthday. And I remember that, you know, split an image. Uh, I mean, not split an image. It was, it was like that exact date on Aaliyah's birthday. I found out that uh, they ran over the estate. And I'm like, how did they do that? You know, because I had mail coming back and forth that I never got. You know, but everybody's knowing about my life before I did so they can put two and two together because the only person I'm living with is my daughter and my ex and my daughter really didn't, you know, she didn't want to get involved with that because it was just too heavy. You know, it was just becoming too much. So that only leaves one person, you know, people that I don't even no longer talk to. There's just like if you step foot over here, it's a, it's a wrap for you. So they stay away from me. But yet, you know, everything that's going on in my life. You know, and people, you know, people, you put my life in danger by telling everybody that you, that will listen to my situation. Like, that's something to be bragging about, you know, but you're only telling part of the story. You're not saying that you, you getting paid to, you know, be a rat and, and, and tell different things. Or you getting paid to try to see how I can come up missing somewhere. And it's at that point, I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing no more. You know, I said I'm tired of always being seen like I'm the worst person on this God given earth. When I got emails back to back to back, what I'm getting from Ancestry of telling me who my family tree is. A part of my family, I have to research online just to find out who it is. And it's a blessing that I do at least know that. But it's a hurtful situation when I went through cancer scares. I used to have very bad epilepsy to where it was at point where I couldn't even function. You can ask me what today is and how I'm feeling. And I would cry because my, my brain waves was not going with my mouth. And these were empathic epileptic seizures that I'm finding out about. He went through his at 5. I went through mine at 25, 27. You know, and those are the things that went on for months at a time to where it, it was like I would be dazed and confused, really couldn't function because of all the medicine they put me on and stuff like that where I couldn't work. I was going through a lot of emotional, mental, and physical abuse then. You know, and I begged my family, I need to find out who my family is. They're telling me this is hereditary. They found a big black spot on the left side of my brain. And I need to go, I need to find out what's going on. And you're telling me you didn't know. So there's a lot of things that I went through and it made me enraged when I couldn't bury my mom. Because you're claiming you don't have no money. My mom didn't have, couldn't even afford to get life insurance and keep it there. And then I find out that you're begging my dad for money to get me out of trouble. And you're using that. But when I need to bury my mom, my mom had to stay in a cooler with cold cream on to where she is decaying by the day 13 days because we had to make sure you know her church finally that we have to bury her they paid for my mom to be moved from midwest all the way to north carolina where the rest of her family is my mom doesn't even have a headstone you know that's how bad it is but yet you can make sure this woman has fancy you know dresses you know, she'll pay like two or three grand for a dress. You know, she got a whole collection of Michael Kors, like all the way from the suitcase and stuff. Living like the, the car, you know, the Kardashians and stuff. Knowing you, you sit up here, you know, you, you paying, you spending all money that is not even for you. You lied to my dad and said that money was for me and my kids and I never received it. You, you paid certain things off for me because you didn't want that coming out that I was struggling. That's the only reason why you did it. It wasn't because you were trying to do what a parent does to get your child out of trouble. 
But it was just because the fact is you would have a lot of explaining to do. Why is she writing bounce checks? You know, why is she going to jail by shoplifting? You know, I was going through stuff like that. And I admit, I'll, I'll pick poor choices. So it's not going to be playing a victim like they do. Because I can admit, you know, I made really bad choices. I, you know, I grew up in certain situations where I felt like toxicity was normal. That was an everyday thing for me, you know. Seeing what constantly, you know, go. And it always made me feel like I was worthless. I was this. You know, I, I you know, I do so many messed up things. I don't deserve love. That's what it basically got spoon fed to me. Because it always came to me where, you know, I went to therapy. And even the therapist finally, you, it ain't nothing wrong with you. It's something wrong with them. You know, you controlling her happiness. You want to be judging the jury. And they got mad. They stopped going to therapy because they see they couldn't pull the wool over, you know, the therapist. I said they went to school for that. You know, other people around them, they can fool very differently, you know, but even my aunt, you know, before she passed away, God rest her soul, you know, um, she knew something was going on to where, why haven't I seen my, my niece in seven years? Why is she not coming over here? What did you do? You know, it's, so, oh, you know, it's her, you know, she don't get along with, and, you know, and she didn't really care for my, my mom's ex-wife, you know, my mom's ex-husband's wife anyway because she she would be looking at him putting her in a place like you're not going to disrespect my, my niece that is my niece I don't care what's going on with you but you're not going to talk about my niece like that and now now she's seeing what's going on and she rumbling in her grave you know and he knew you know you don't think it's crazy but he thinks there's no way of me possibly knowing because I didn't talk to my aunt like that you know me and her were tight but we didn't talk about deep dark secrets on why they acted the way they were all of them were functioning alcoholics and it's no disrespect to my, my, you know, my aunts and their, you know, their, my cousins and stuff like that. But this is, they went through some really dark stuff. Now, I won't get into that. But now I understand why they function the way they function. Because they really went through the, some dark stuff. And you pass that on to me, too. And they, she knew. You can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to me. I know you did something. I know the way how y'all talk about her. You know, there was something going on. She peeped that. She wasn't stupid. She didn't go for the okie doke like everybody else did. Because there will be people when I go over there, they will introduce me to them. And all of a sudden, they'll be looking at me. They'll be whispering. And all of a sudden, they start looking down at me. I'm like, why is every time they, you start talking to people and they act like that? Well, I just told them about what you do. And, but did you tell them they're half on why I did it that way? You know, it would be different situations where they always try to make me look bad, even towards my kids, to make my kids look at me funny. You know, but you weren't never telling them. You were putting me through mental, emotional, and physical abuse. I'm being looked at in a certain way that a, a father shouldn't look at their daughter at. While, you know, why as quiet as this kept. You know, those different things. I had to go through a lot of this stuff to where I tell people, you know, you're going to go through some different things in your life that's really going to shut a whole city in silence for things that you deal with that you don't tell people about because you may be worried about being judged or you don't want to make family members angry because you're putting out dark secrets like that's supposed to stay in the family. No, if you're being abused, are you getting beat down? Are you getting to that point where you're being dehumanized because people taking pleasure out of that because they can't heal from their family situation because of what they went through, their family put you th them through? They take that mess out on you? You speak up. I got to that point where I got tired of being selective about what I talk about. Because this ain't about, you know, getting vengeance. This is about me, you know, spilling all my tea. Because, you know, like when that stuff, it really, like, tipped the scale over me where I thought I was about to snap. When I sit up here and seen the man that sit up here and signed my dad's will, Lionel Mac McMillan. You sign my dad's will with something on it, and you getting entitled to somebody, you know, in good and well, hell, that they're not entitled to that, and then you coming out with it. And I know that all the law officials that's on this situation, the lawyers and stuff, and even the judges in on it too. I'm not putting no allegedly for nothing. It's true. Now I I don't care about them going back and saying, oh, she's definitely made my character. How am I doing that when it's true? You signed my dad's will back in 1988, 1987, 88 era, where he said anything, if, if he was to die, I want to make sure my daughter is taken care of because other people in my, my family will not do that. I want to make sure my daughter is taken care of. So anything that I have, her name's come second to. So every, every, everything to the last penny he had was in my name. So I'm trying to figure out illegally, how were you able to get something? It's all in the news where, you know, 
certain people and sold their part of the you know estate off how did you do that because you're not supposed to be able to do that now when I'm telling you law officials Lauren Ruthier David Crosby Law Firm Emily Unger and Commerce Bank was all into these different things DNA diagnostics you were paid off different people that you know that in my situation and my sibling situation was paid off because you didn't want none of this stuff coming out there even my saying my siblings talking about I wanted to be able to connect with my aunt and they didn't want nothing to do with me because they knew if you come out they're not entitled to nothing Anything that is a law right now, it will make people put on pause if they that was to get out. That even when you put some signatures out and you make multiple copies just to make sure your children are safe and secure so you don't have to worry about your kids struggling and they got something they can pass on to the legacy. And then you're sitting up here where you're, you're if I can give you a certain amount of money, we can make this whole will and testament go away. You know how many people will be shook? Especially if you're a person of high profile and you are a celebrity or you are part of an elite. That you're saying that I can sign this and I put give this to my wife, my children, and my dog and this and this and that. And if I got jealous family members because they don't have a dime, I want to make sure that they don't get it. But if I can get my hands or if we can be able to eliminate this and lie and do this make sure we say that she's dead or this and this and that. Can we give you a part of the money too? People are just looking for another dollar, not realizing it could be a 50-50 chance you can really get away with this. Or a 50-50 chance you about to get caught and all y'all about to go down, you know, in this situation. Because it's at that point where I see where people do that, especially when they're talking about celebrity. Allegedly this happened because they don't want to get sued. With me, I'm like, come on with the come on. Because you already know good and well, hell, if I come out, everything about to be a wrap. Because I'm about to bring out all receipts that prove to me you knew every, the whole time before my dad would even all the way stone cold that you knew that his daughter was out here. You knew that the family here in Georgia made sure that they had money, but they never allowed my dad to see me. He never knew what I looked like. Nothing like that because he knew. They knew. If I, he knew exactly where I was, exactly how to find me, exactly how I look like, everything would have been all messed up. Because every time my dad came down to visit me, there was always some drama to kick off and like, okay, make sure you dress nice when you come out. Because I live right down, you know, I work down the street from their house. And I always wonder why you always call me tripping. You know, always sign an argument. And it would be different people that believe it. It would be a friend that was at the time that, you know, that I was friends with. They're always like, you know, you sure you don't want to go over there? I said, man, I ain't trying to go over there. And they sit up here arguing with stupid stuff. I don't even know why they're arguing for it. They always invite me over here and stuff like that. And then they'll be seeing all these Suburbans and limousines and stuff all parked up, you know, by the house. Limousines all up in the yard, carport. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on because I already know they're Eastern Star. I don't deal with them Illuminati type situations or whatever. So I don't know if I'm getting sacrificed or not, you know, because it'd be in those situations where I didn't trust them. They put me in situations too much where they always try to make me look stupid. So it was hard when you can't trust family like that. And then you come to find out, oh. Prince is right dead in the house. You could have really did something because it was something in my heart. You know, put me in a panic attack. Like, what are y'all setting me up for? Because there was a lot of times since I moved here that you would constantly put me in situations where you would constantly belittle me, berate me, and embarrass me. Where you would have people talking mess to me or talking at me, or I'd be the butt of somebody's joke. You know, I constantly went through emotional and mental abuse like that. Or I had people, you know, you want to, you want to jump face with me. Like, you don't say something, I'm gonna punch you in your face. Be different stuff like that I had to go through with my mom's ex-husband. So it was hard for me even to trust him. You know. So you going through different things like this. I had to be at that point where I'm tired of being tired. If you good for sitting up here. Want, always want to sit up here and throw my name in the mud. Want to talk about I'm a clout chaser and this and that. I'm going to really start telling T. Because I'm not allegedly saying nothing. This is what happened. You know. Law officials involved judges involved all the lawyers that was on my dad's estate involved because the fact is y'all all supposed to get a big cut of the money and just say shut up and didn't want me nowhere near minnesota because you knew if i came down it was a wrap it was a wrap i had to go through this each and every day where i lost everything so it's at that point where i don't care no more if you want to sue me you gonna sue me but you already know you're not gonna sue me because the fact is you gonna end up telling on your own self 
Because I told people, you always want to constantly say, I'm lying or I'm looking for attention. Nothing like that. How come you ain't never heard in a media countdown, TMZ or anything like that, for me being sued by Prince's family because I lied and said that was my father? How come that? Because you have a lot of... I got pictures here. I, I mean, this is what started me off six years ago by saying Prince was my father. Different pictures that I showed. You know, when I was a certain weight, I looked like my aunt. When I was, I lost a lot of weight, I looked just like my dad. You know, different things like that. I had to really go through. This is a situation that shook me to the core. I have constant nervous breakdowns. I have, you know, I go through depression. It hits hard because I go through emotional eating where I eat a lot through my depression. You know, I get talked about, oh, she ain't got fat, this and this, that. Any, you, you know you're a low level of scum when you can laugh about the depression you're putting somebody in. And knowing good and well, you you can't even function if something ain't going right, right there for a right day. And I'm like, baby, if we on other foot, you would have annihilated yourself a long time ago. You wouldn't have been able to take six years of BS that somebody doing to you, knowing good and well they're lying. It was all fun and games when they thought that I was about to be annihilated. It was all fun and games when you thought that a group of y'all can put me out and still I'm still breathing. I'm still making videos. I'm still making podcasts. I can still wish love and prayers to people. I'm helping people connect with their family that I'm passed on. I'm knowing different things. There's no way of me knowing by helping people heal in different ways while I'm helping myself. You know, and that's why I tell people never be scared because of family secrets getting out. And when people know that they, you know, when you already know you did something you ain't supposed to do, you ain't going to put yourself in a position for somebody to come right on you when they get to that point where they got tired of being tired. I'm that type of person where you don't poked up the sleeping bear and hibernation too much. And at that point, I ain't scared of nobody. I don't seen death too many daggone times to be worrying about somebody out there on the street, you know, because God got me. My deities got me. My tribal ancient ones that I'm passed over got me. My family that I'm passed over got me. You know, I'm learning more about myself, getting strengthened every day because it's at that point, I'm not going to allow this to hold me back no much longer. I'm going to say what I said and I'm going to say what I said. And if it wants to come out, somebody want to sue me, let's go. I, I Please, I want to bring it all out so we can get this all over and done with because that's how I'm tired. I'm tired of, you know, constantly seeing articles about how y'all really fighting. Y'all ain't, ain't heard nothing about how y'all trying to come to a conclusion on what and who killed my dad. It was all about money. You don't care about how my dad died. Because I even told law officials, DEA and stuff like that. Okay, I think my family had something to do with it. Because all of a sudden, my uncles done dropped dead, like not even almost a year apart. After they unsigned their piece, of, you know, all of a sudden, is in, in the thing which y'all unsigned you know your rights away from the will and all of a sudden all of a sudden you pass away and nobody ain't seeing nothing odd about that nobody can't find that nobody's being held responsible for where my dad got these fentanyl pills from but yet you know my mom's ex-husband's wife she's a nurse she has a lot of people that take stuff like that and I told him that she has access to medicine like that and I really feel a motive off of that you sit up here getting millions of dollars sent to a child that you've never seen they want to know where their money's going that's a lot of money. You came here, you were okay. You go to concert, you were singing just fine. Four days later, you sounded like you you deaf walking on water, where you can't you struggling to even talk. To where that was, my last time speaking to my dad right before he passed away. It was like two days, two or three days before he passed. You know, and it was like, I wasn't putting two and two together because it was just like, when I'm seeing it, I'm like, no, this was a person that was singing his heart out, literally. And he knew he was about to die. You know, he always said, you know, don't don't give up prayers just yet. You know, the little ominous things that he was saying, you know, because he knew. He knew this is something I have to sit with my life every day. There was times where I even told people I wanted to just disfigure my own face so I don't have to see my dad in my face. There'll be different times where I see his face morph on my face when I look in the mirror at times. And that was very hard for me to have to deal with. It's hard when you just really want closure in your life and you don't have your adopted family that wants to deal with you. You know, the family that actually loved and cared for you. You don't tarnish my name with my family to where they don't even want to speak to me anymore. You know, they, you need to get, you know, you need to mend things with them. I see y'all ain't giving me a chance to even hear my side of the story. They didn't want to hear nothing about it because they, you know, they felt like, oh, they're adults. You know, she always constantly got in trouble. So they got to be telling the truth. And you were already working a number on them, right? Even while my mom was on her deathbed, you were already working up drama. That's how cold hearted people were. 
Like, I'm going through things where I don't know if my kids being mistreated, they're being touched, you know, because I had to live leaving with different people that goes through my mom's church and not saying they were doing that. But this is a mom, a single mom that's going through stuff already, going 175 miles every day to go see a mom at I, neonatal ICU where she had a stroke. You know, she's dealing with Alzheimer's and dementia at the same time. So that stroke took her, you know, she's not able to talk. All she can do is blink, you know, and, and mm, a little bit. That's it. I don't know if my mom's getting mis, you know, mistrust, you know, misused or, you know, mistreated. That's what I meant to say. And then I had to deal with this with my kids on this side. I was a nervous wreck. And then I got family, the so-called family. You, you telling people I'm selling my mom stuff for drugs and stuff like that. I'm stressed the hell out. I'm worried about, you know, making sure I'm not making any bad decisions. It's going to send my mom to an early grave. That would be on my system. You know, asking my mom's ex-husband, can you come down here and help me? I'm used to y'all doing the adult things about, you know, funeral cost and, you know, this. I can't do that because my wife will get upset. And my mom's supposed to jump out of bed on her dying deathbed to come hump you. Is, is this where that woman has serial serious mental issues and low self-esteem that she's worried about a woman that don't have days but probably hours to live and she's worried about how it would look about her this ain't about her and i would constantly get into an argument that upset her did you ask for her ex-husband i didn't ask him to come down there and be with her i asked him to come down here and help me but if it's a, a situation where i'm going through a situation like this i'm his daughter before y'all even came in the picture and this because she's worried about how her feelings are getting hurt that already knew Right, I, I popped off on my mom's husband. You could die today and I would not give a shit. And that's how exactly how it was. Where I popped off in anger because I begged you to be here. And all you can do is tell me I'll pray for you. You couldn't even pay for my mom's funeral costs. Then all of a sudden I'm, I'm seeing how this woman parading around $1,500 uh, earrings, shoes, purses, luggages, where everything is all, where you, you I mean, you just all, and I'm supposed to be the sport brat. Now I'm living on two for now. It was like a Cinderella story with me. You know, going through all these different things in my life. So this is what I'm saying is, it got it got to that point where I said I'm tired of, you know, tiptoeing around things to make people not look, look good. And just being able to hold my tongue, even though you're talking bad about me. Because I want to be left alone. I'm tired of being around people I can't trust. That I always got to constantly look over my shoulder. Constantly keep my door locked. Because people trying to break into my room. Buying me to them. Doing love spells on me. You know all those different things. To where, but you're telling people you don't want to be dealing with me. I'm only doing this because it's the mother of my child. And all this stuff. But you had no problem with taking me away from your child. The mother of your child. Because you want money. And then when you see everybody finesse. And I, I told them they don't play the hell out of you. And I said, let me tell you how this is going to go down. If I was to die. We got domestic violence all out there. They would have sat there and said, we tried to get her away from him. We would have tried to get her away from him, but they always constantly fight. They would have pulled this to where they would have left the blame on you. And they would have got all this money. And they would have left you up in there pulling life. And you took your baby mama out. You don't took... Not, it's just your father, your your your, your daughter, would have, your kids would have lost their father as well as one would have lost her mother. And you would have been in jail paying for some stuff that they done set up here and told you get a certain amount of money. They would have killed two birds with one stone. Now the kids don't get, my kids wouldn't get nothing even though they're descendants of him. And they would have been, li all of them would have been living good while your dumb ass would have been in jail. And they would have made sure that nothing never ever stayed in contact with you. To where it can't even mix, put you in a mix to where all that would have fell on you because they would have used that as an excuse because we had domestic violence going on and it would have said, oh she did that. they did that in, in the Midwest and they did that there because Universe showed me this would have been let me tell you the plot twist on how this would have went down if they you know they killed that connection with him before that connection killed him but yet y'all don't put your old self in the same situation because it's been said many times you need to leave her alone you need to do what's right you need to be honest but it was all about that mighty dollar it's all about you living good because it's like he he don't lived all this way he has these lavish cars these estates all these women all this money you know he's able to do this they always talking about prince 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 this and it was always you have to fall in the shadows for it now you about to be famous for some stuff that you really didn't want to get out. All y'all stole money. You bribed people for hush money to keep make sure that anybody knew about my situation. Either they done passed on or they are very well paid. 
just so they don't have to get out and because you already know when it comes to situations like that it just don't fall with the siblings and my adopted family here it's in the same place it has something to do with law officials and on it too because they're getting paid you paying law officials here to make sure if anything comes from this this situation everything will be covered up the way they want it to be because they don't want it coming out because I didn't get any help and I knew with the situation I had going on I had receipts why am I not getting help because they were paid that's how deep this situation goes to where now I don't care about being looked at a certain way I, like I said I showed y'all emails where the ancestry I get stuff from them every week where it's talking about you know family trees on that and my dad is constantly draped all over that you can't sit up here and make up anything from ancestry you know if I'm sitting up here using a name you can sue me if I'm sitting up here saying oh, okay ancestry send me an email every day and I'm using this and I'm using my dad as that example which is a high profile you know celebrity I can get sued from this left and right for defamation character I'm like please go ahead I'm not saying allegedly nothing the lawyer the lawyers for all those different banks and stuff and, the, and them they had something to do with it they knew who I was the one who signed off on my dad's will that got a part of the money he knew I was on there and that's what really made me really want to pop off like how could you do that my dad trusted you you know, and that will make anybody look at a situation. If I go to my lawyer and I paid a certain amount of money to have a, a living will and testament, I'm putting different copies all over the place to make sure my children or my family is secure straight. But if I got jealous family over here that they, they're mad because they didn't have a come up like I did. So you trying to tell me if they pay you a certain amount of money, you gonna make all those will and testaments, make sure they, they you know, they disappear. The ones from my home, all of a sudden, they get, you know, people are like, that just don't make sense. Especially if you already see how he is. You know, and one thing, good thing I can say about Maite, Maite knew. She didn't know exactly what the wheels were, but she knew there was wheels there. That's one thing I could give credit for that woman. Other, th other things, I just keep my mouth shut because I ain't got time to be sitting up here unleashing stuff that I don't went through with her. But that's one thing I can sit up here and say. She did say that my father had wheels, and he did. He really did. I mean, I agree with a lot of the other things she did, but that is one thing I can agree with her when she said, my dad does have wills. And, you know, and it's a situation where I said, all tea is being spilled. You know, they know I have DNA matches that match that. They made sure that anything that where I can know I can get a lawyer and win that, they made sure they shut it down in every way possible. Because, you know, in situations like this, you got a certain amount of window doors did you got to get your stuff in and they made sure that they 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 manipulated that in their favor because they didn't want that coming out but now it's like the way i feel like karma and god did it he he put all this out oh you know it's awarded to the state there's no children there's no descendants and there's no will the only child that was actually here was amir I mean, he passed away seven days after his you know his birth no that's what you wanted to think you know, they always wanted that stuff the way that happened. But they already knew if anything was to come out, this is going to get bad. It's going to get really bad because there's, you know, there's lawyers involved in this where you got paid very well. You know, and it was just that point where that really was a thorn in my side when I seen a person that my dad actually trusted that signed off on the will with my name on it. And you knew there was proof and you could have spoke up then. But just for the amount of money, you, they made sure they put you in that situation, which made you an arse of your own self. Because now you are a part of a, a very illegal operation that you all of y'all can get indicted for. To where if it comes out, you can sue the state of Minnesota for doing this because you know legally you weren't entitled to anything. You had your nerve to make sure she don't get her grubby hands on nothing because we don't get entitled to nothing. You already mad at you and your greed automatically thought that I was going to be that type of person like you are to me. And not, you know, I, I'm not that type of person. Where the heck am I going to do with all that amount of money like that when I know he had family? I want to be able to get to know my family. I'm, I'm not a person that moves in that type of, uh, of vibration. But now when I see, it, it shows me how people truly are. This situation made me really look at people different. You know, I lost people that I loved and trusted. I would have did over the moon stuff for. That I would have helped. That had no problem with stabbing me in my back. And trying to see, oh, if we make her come up missing, can we get a cut too? And that was a, a, a thing that, that really hit me hard. That was hard for me to digest. But then it showed me, you know, where God was showing me, you know, 
this is what you're going through, but I want to really show you who is there for you. Who is there for you? And I can count on one hand how many people are still there for me. You know, really there. You know, and it's just like, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I, it seemed like I had family through strangers more than I had family through blood and people that I knew. And that was very sad for me, but I also seen how people will, will flip on you on a dime on the last time legally literally that people would treat you certain type of ways when you you're you're in, you're related to somebody that you have no control over you know and it's not for me to be clout chasing you know as I've been heard that I do or gathering attention it's just for me being able to say this is my truth this is what I'm going through and this is what I'm tired of going through I want to be left alone. I don't want to be forced in a relationship to where, you know, you disrespected me. You did everything to dis dehumanize me. But if you can't get a part of the cut, then I can't either. You can't move on with your life. I got to deal with selfish people like that. You know, where I'm tired of going through mental and emotional abuse. You're trying to do different things to set me off. Or you're hoping I put hands on you. And they know. They know I'm that type of person. I'll fight you. I'm a female or male. I don't care. Y'all can both catch it. We can go to the streets. And that's what they're hoping I would do. That you put me in danger. And you're about hoping I pop off with one of y'all so that I can go put, get put in jail and get stayed. You know, stay there because you're not going to bail me out. And, it, you know, when I tell you that takes a lot of self-control. That takes a lot of self-care. That I had to be able to control my emotions. Because I'm that type of person. Don't. Don't sit up here and, you know, if you're going to come, come at me like that. You want to be gutter about it, be all the way gutter, but you be truthful about your gutterness. And that's the big difference between me and all these people involved in that. They always want to make their self look like, oh, they're the victim. They're, you know, I try to love Rosalind, I try to help her. Listen, no, no, you're trying to take me out and you're getting pissed off that everything you're doing to me is not working. So now you want to be, okay, if I can't beat her, I can join her. But you have the same vibe. If I can't have her, nobody can have her. I got bills. I got kids. You know, I, I done accumulated all this stuff because I thought I was going to get this and this and that. So uh, I need you to, you know, go ahead. You know, I, I need some of that money. But if you're not going to let me go, you're not going either. Who the hell said I'm not? I, I'm going to get out of this situation. You know, if I got to sit up here and put my situation out and tell people this is what I'm going through, this is what I'm facing, this is something I got to constantly keep digesting and forgiving and working on my, my, my mental health all the time just to stay safe and sane into my life where you got so many people that are trying to break you down. Like, it, it, it's like it make you feel like you're superhuman and you can look at a situation like this and it, it can shake you to the core because you're like you have nobody to run to except God and your family don't pass over because everybody around you oh it's out it's a wrap you know it'd be certain you know certain family members that'll help me out every once in a while but it's not something that you would do if you were real true family members you know because it's like I, I've seen situations where the shoe was on the other foot and people were really struggling and it wouldn't even be a doubt in my mind if I had it you had it I was always just like that. But when I see, I had to be in that mindset where everybody don't have your same heart. You got people that's, even the people that you love and care for, is starting to look at you in a whole different way like you're a bum. You're a loser. I'm not helping you. I'll help you if I feel like it, you know. But will use my weakness to be able to bring me down worse. Because this is at that point in my life where I'm doing everything to be able to do things in an honest way. And it's not by using my dad is something for a come up because I never wanted to live in my dad's shadows. I love who my dad is. You know, he's an amazing person inside out. I got to know that part of him. Even though it was based off of deception, I know a part of him that many people didn't contact with like that unless he really cared about you or he really trusts you, you know. And that part of me, I will always keep close to my heart, you know. And it's at that point where I'm tired of hearing my dad's name dragged in the mud. I'm tired of hearing my name being used as something that you want to use for people to look at me in a certain way or I get death threats all the time I get tired of people coming at me negative because you're paying people to do that to me I'm not going to stop now it's at that point where now everybody going to know what you did and I'm like run with it boom <laughs> I'm at that point where I don't care I'm not going to say allegedly for nothing because this is all what happened and now when I'm bringing it out I wanted to get in touch with media I want, it, want people to know this is what people do when they're about greed, when they feel like this should have been me type vibe. Jealous as hell. Where you willing to steal money 
You know, and I tell people all the time, oh, if I'm lying, please, please, let's, let's go take this to a civil suit and see who will win. Especially when you know that there's proof out there that says, contradicts every single thing that you said. And this is what arise, this is the aftermath when you are feeling, falling, rock bottom. To rise is the true warrior you need to be. I would not, never let anybody stop me, no matter blood, no blood adopted or not. People that want to be standing in the shadows and trying to do all their little devilish deeds towards me, you're not going to stop me. God got me. I don't care about who rolls against me. I don't, if I got God on my side, that's all I need. That's all I need. But he knew at this time I had to make peace with God before I made this video. Is it okay if I do this? You know? Because it's at that point, you know, I'm not truly, really trying to get gutter on here. So I censored myself a little bit. But when, it start, when I start dropping names, I'm not saying allegedly nothing because I want you to come for me. Because you already know you did some dirty stuff. And you already know you did some illegal stuff. Devil's advocate, whatever you want to call it, you did something dirty. But it's just the fact is I can't lie on ancestry. I can't lie on genetics. Y'all know I got proof of all that. I got paper trails dropping all over the place. And you were scared as I don't know what because you see that I'm not dead. And now it's starting to get scary to you because karma is really hitting you. I always tell people when you do something, it has it's going to come to you. What, what you reap is what you will sow. So that's why even I pray for them. I send them healing because you're going to need it. You're going to get enlightenment like days you you think you done went through some trenches now. Oh, it, it, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So now I'm starting to lay truth out there. Because I already know I got people that live in my city that talk to certain people in my, my life. That I'm really truly just ready to get part ways with. I'm like, if I don't see you every day soon enough, it, it won't be soon enough. I'm good. I don't hate you, but there ain't no love lost there. There ain't no love there because I feel like when you do stuff like this, that you, you don't do like this to, to people you love. You're doing everything you can to try to allow me to try to have me arrested doing all this. No. Because I don't go nowhere. I don't do nothing. I don't smoke weed. You know, I'm like, hey, I'll give you my hair samples and urine. Can we say the same for other people? No. <laughs> no. I don't do anything. All I do is, you know, I got different things. Okay, cell phone pings and stuff like that. You'll never see me leave my house. You know, anybody watching me like, look, this heifer don't even leave. I don't know what y'all pay me for. You know, different stuff like that. But it's at that point where I say I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of my name getting thrown in the mud. I'm tired of being talked about like that. I really don't care what other people say. But it's at that point. Let it be the truth that you, you want to dog me out for. Not a lie. Not a lie. Because this is all truth. But this is the end of this. End of benediction. And I hope you know you can be able to see what I was talking about. Different things that you can understand why I am the way I am. And why I flow like I flow. Much love. Peace.